Hey, what is going on, you guys? It is Mr. No Sleep here from Old School RuneScape, and welcome to a brand new loot video for you all today. So this video is a little bit different than my normal monster-related videos. This time, I wanted to take 25,000 amulets of glory and charge them all at the Fountain of Rune, just to see how much money I would make from charging every single one of them, and also, of course, hoping that I would get the Eternal Glory. And as you can see in the inventory, as well as the Grand Exchange, the start amount of money for this video was just about 300 mil. However, once I did get all 25,000 glories, which did take almost about two days, the exact number spent was 299,683,000. Certainly was a lot of money to invest in one video. However, I knew that no matter what was going to happen, I was definitely going to make some profit because I think we can all agree having a charged glory with six charges is definitely going to be more valuable and especially more useful than an uncharged glory. Expect to hear the word glory a lot throughout this video by the way but yeah I didn't actually do the intro uh, until I finished a few inventories of charging them I guess I just somehow forgot to do it so don't mind that but yeah getting into the inventory itself at first I just wanted to see how this would go so I was only bringing 20 glories per trip this is not recommended though I think that the ideal amount would be 25 that way you can bring a prayer potion a ceradoman brew and of course your wilderness sword now it is important to note that for this video I was using the wilderness sword four. And this sword gives you unlimited teleports to the Fountain of Rune. And on top of that, I was also using my own player-owned house obelisk. And every time I would use it, I would redirect it to 13 wilderness every time that I wanted to bank. And if you don't have the wilderness diaries completed up until this point, the hourly rate for how many glories you charge will be much lower than my best hourly rate, which I think ended up being just about 1500 per hour. Which means that this video should have only taken realistically like 16 to 17 hours, but it ended up taking just about 20 because I was on multiple accounts and uh, occasionally I would AFK. So after a few hours of bringing 20 glories every inventory, I did decide to bank the anglerfish and sandfuse serum. Just stick with two brews and one wilderness sword and the rest of my inventory would just be glories. Charging 25 per trip versus 20 per trip really does increase on how many you can charge per hour, as you can imagine. And it just went by much faster. But at the end of the day, it's all up to you on how many you want to bring and how much you want to risk. Gear wise for me, since this is the wilderness, I went with a good max tank setup so that if I ran into any majors or PKers in general, I would be able to somewhat tank while I try to escape back to the obelisk. And I will say that there was plenty of people who tried to kill me through this video, as you will see shortly. But the gear, just like the inventory, it's all up to you. You know, some people bring absolutely nothing, and some people bring weight reducing boots like boots of lightness or helpful capes such as spotted or spottier. Having the max cape, though, also helped a ton with pretty much the whole video, teleporting to the crafting guild to bank with it and then back to my player own house to use my rejuvenation pool to get back up to 100% run energy pretty much makes it the most OP cape for charging glories as well as many other things in the game. So now that we've gone over how to charge glories let's talk a little bit about the best reward that you can get from charging them. That being the amulet of eternal glory. Unlimited charges making it anywhere from 30 to 32 mil depending on the week. It actually did change significantly in prices from the three days that I did take to do this video, which I did find to be surprising. And yeah, it was released into the game June 30th, 2016, and recharging Dragonstone Jewelry at the Fountain of Rune came into the game March 27th, 2014. And if you didn't know, the odds of receiving the Eternal Glory is 1 in 25,000. So that's kind of why I wanted to go with 25,000 glories to be charged for this video. Kind of felt appropriate, you know? And if you're curious of the difference between charging your jewelry at the Heroes Guild versus the Fountain of Rune, the Fountain of Rune gives a charge of plus six and the hero's guild gives a charge of plus four the only downside is of course the wilderness you can die and lose everything and the hero's guild is a hundred percent safe you just need the quest of course also important to note that you do need the legends quest complete if you want to charge combat bracelets or skills necklaces and while you're charging your glories here at the fountain of rune even if you have one equipped as well as a ring of wealth they will get charged as well so it doesn't just have to be in your inventory which is pretty cool and i will say through the three days that it did take me to do all 25,000 glories, I sure did run into a lot of people around this area. And for obvious reasons, you know, this Fountain of Rune is actually located south of the Wilderness Volcano and east of Callisto, so you will occasionally see Callisto PVMers as well as Callisto PKers. Tons of people doing hard clue scrolls, running north, good amount of people doing master clues right at the Fountain of Rune itself, and of course people that are strictly there to try and kill you. Now the world choice for this video kind of varies 
varied from the 500s to the totals, main total worlds being 415 and 428. But in my opinion, you know, it really doesn't matter what world you choose. Most people think that total worlds are safer, but if you go on YouTube and you type in total level world PKing, I can assure you that there are better worlds to choose from. But again, that's all up to you. Certainly did run into a few interesting people throughout this video. For example, this guy here, he's actually done over 50,000 medium clue scrolls. So I don't know if I'm ever going to make a loot from 1,000 on that, but yeah, keep you guys posted. At this point in the video, we were at 7,000 glories charged overall, and I think really only two people had tried to kill me up until this point, and I did luckily escape both of those times. Either got really lucky with the logging out, or just got really lucky with the obelisk timing. Hadn't run into any PKers at the fountain itself yet. You gotta imagine, you know, I don't think you're gonna see too many people PKing there, and I say this because it's just such a dead area, and alongside me charging glories, I really didn't see too many other people doing it. Maybe throughout the three days that this video took, I maybe saw two or three people charging glories total. And speaking of two and three, it looks like this guy needed more than three ice barrages in order to hit me because this gear was just doing really good tanking and luckily I did get away. And the run itself from the Fountain of Rune to the Obelisk is a pretty long run, so if you run into one PK or let alone two or three and they do have freezes with them, I don't know what that guy was doing scold. You better pray or knock on wood that you do have some good mage tank bonus gear because if not and if you do happen to get frozen you just have to rely on your bare minimum supplies that you brought alongside all of your jewelry and usually that's not too reliable if you're just talking about just a couple brews and just a couple food and just shortly after the last attempt i did have two different majors uh one of them was kind of one iteming i wasn't too sure what he was doing and then the other one was actually in a 2200 world so there are people that do pk here in 2200 worlds i mean it is the wilderness after all you know it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter what world you're in, you always have to expect the unexpected, and just like I didn't expect to get away, I actually did manage to get away from this guy. Had these guys had teleblock instead of being on Ancients, I definitely would have died probably much more often, but most single PKers never bring teleblock, especially when you're in 50 Wilderness, so at least there's that. And as you just saw in that last clip, you know that poor guy who was killing Callisto getting 2v1'd and uh, the guys that killed him actually decided to kill me. And this was an amateur mistake, you know, I saw them and uh, I think I said to myself, alright, you gotta hop worlds. And I guess I forgot to hop worlds, I just tellied right back up there and I guess they had just gotten there so I did get attacked right away and one of them had a ballista, the other one had a god sword. And obviously having no restores, no prayer potions, kinda set myself up for failure here. Spam clicking everywhere, you know, the map's coming up, you know I was panicking. Really just using a few brews, and although I did get a little distance in between us, I didn't want to get smited for my Guth and Selm, so I pretty much just took the L, and I just said to them, hey, I, you know, I can't get smited, I'll just die here. Although I gotta say, I think I was gonna die either way, so at least I'd rather die with prayer points than no prayer points, so there was that. But yeah, that was the first and the only death throughout this whole entire video, and that was right before we got to the 10,000 mark. So almost the halfway point, still didn't have the eternal glory, was making some, you know, decent gains. It was pretty good money per hour despite no eternal, or at least so I had thought, but we will see at the very end of the video when we do the price check just how much we made. And although I did lose a max cape, which is about 2.27 mil, uh, I'm not gonna subtract that from the price check. That's just kind of my fault, you know, so not too worried about the loss there. And a big shout out, of course, to everyone that I did run into in game. You know, I did try to get most of you guys on video whenever anyone would say hello or something like that. I know people appreciate that. And one thing that I certainly wanted to get on video was this moment right here. Ladies and gentlemen, we did receive the Amulet of Eternal Glory at just around 11,000 glories in. Considered to be almost the halfway point and at a price of 30 mil, I was very, very happy to see that. I think I price checked it in the very beginning of the video and I think it actually went down like either two or one mil, but either way, it was certainly nice to see. And yeah, I should have just probably stopped right there, but you know, still had to do 14,000 more glories. Glories. But yeah, it was number 11,125 for the Eternal. So no matter what happens, even if the price of the Glories did go down throughout the rest of the video, with the Eternal, I was already profiting. And something that you might see while you're charging Glories or running around this area is people also going for the Majorina 2 cape. Kind of a uh, fun fact for you. And this clip here, this two-man team, soon to be three-man team, were uh, PKing, I believe, at the Callisto's safe spot to the north. And they did find me and they instantly attacked me 
as expected, so I had to try my very best to get away, you know, I didn't want to die another time, didn't want to replace those mystic boots again, you know. Luckily, their ice barrages all splashed numerous times, and I was able to successfully get away, so that was very nice. And all this time, I still forgot to mention another PKing hotspot, which is to the west of the obelisk, and that being Chaos Elemental. And in this next clip here, I saw this poor PVMer getting attacked, so I thought, let me save her life, you know, so I went, and these guys were just redirecting the obelisk, you know, so I had to redirect it myself, and I said to her, don't worry, I got this, I'll take care of everything. I mean, for God's sakes, one of the guys was ice bursting, so you know, the standards weren't that high, but unfortunately, she did die, so can't save them all. And something to always take into consideration, especially while charging glories at the Fountain of Rune, is that this is 50 plus wilderness, or I mean 47, and then it gets to 50 in the northern parts. So if you are a lower level, you know, like level 3 or level 10 or 20, do expect there to be some lower level accounts to kill you there. You know, I did see a few low level rangers, like around 30 to 40 combat, and of course in that clip there that you just saw, there was like a level 80 there trying to kill me, or somewhere in the 80s. So, you know, you always gotta expect the unexpected, so no matter what your combat is, always make sure to bring just a little bit of food, or if you're just one of those Ironman accounts who wants to charge your glories, only bring like four, that way you're not gonna lose anything if you accidentally get scold, or even if you die unscold, so it's always something to keep in mind. Here on this clip coming up, you know, I was pretty confident that I was going to die, because this guy was just catching every freeze, and uh, he seemed to know what he was doing, and he was also doing the tactic of trying to make your opponent conversate while you're trying to kill them. So luckily for me, I just had to kind of reroute my escape, and it did work out, so we were able to log out uh, on the east side rather than running to the obelisk. So yeah, always be prepared, you know, there is nice gaps with all of these fences surrounding the Fountain of Rune, you know, there's always good ways where you can just kind of outsmart your opponent. I'm definitely not one to outsmart anyone, so uh, if I can do it, you can do it. I think the key with charging glories is you just have to be observant. For example, in this clip here, I just got done charging my glories, and as I was running south, I didn't click too far ahead, and I did notice that there was a team killing a PVM or at Callisto, so, you know, kind of gives you the heads up in advance. Even when you're on multiple accounts, just gotta pay a little bit of attention whenever you're in the wilderness, as I always say in these wilderness-related loot videos. And although none of this was live-streamed on Twitch, I was in my clan chat the whole entire time, as most of the days I am, and two of my clan chat members thought it would be funny to try and kill me. I think one of them was on mobile, I have no idea what these guys were doing, but you're both getting D-ranked, so thanks for that. Also, speaking of live streaming, I know a lot of people have been curious where have the streams been. I haven't done a stream in about three weeks, and I do occasionally go on and off from Twitch, but I will be back very shortly. Uh, the start of next month, I'm actually going to be doing something a little crazy, um, especially on Twitch, and you guys will hear more and see more about that if you follow me on Snapchat in the coming weeks. Man, I really feel like I rambled a lot in this video. Like, how did I make a Loot from Charging Glory video 15 minutes long? Absolutely ridiculous. You all better dislike this. But yeah, here it is. Finally, Loot from Charging 25,000 Amulets of Glory has been completed. One eternal glory, one death, and a whole lot of fun. Well, not so much on the last part, but yeah, either way, this only took just about 16 hours to do efficiently, and since I'm not efficient, this did take me just about 20 hours total. So a week ago, I bought all of these 25,000 glories for 11,987 apiece. Now let's go ahead and see how much the Amulet of Glory with 6 charges sell for. It didn't sell for 12,200, nor did it sell for 12,150. Final number that I was able to get off of the Grand Exchange was 12,100. 100, which, yeah, that's not a whole lot of profit. I do believe that's 114 GP profit per glory, and if we do 114 times 25,000, we do end up with just about 2.85 mil profit. So, yeah, thankfully, we did get the eternal glory. I mean, it is 1 in 25,000, so it would only make sense to get it. And yeah, I mean, I think there will be people in the comments that say, Mr. No Sleep, you should have just kept these in the GE for much more, and you would have made more over time. But overall, you know, 3 mil is 3 mil, it's still profit. Uh, if you kind of combine that with the Eternal Glory, you can expect to make over 33 mil. So that's just on the low end. Uh, if you don't get the Eternal Glory, you're going to waste a lot of time, and you're probably going to be really upset, because I know I would have been. But luckily, we didn't have to go through that. We did get the Eternal, that was the main goal for this video. The other side profit, it really doesn't matter that much, because this used to be much more profitable. But Glories have gone down significantly in price through the years, as well as there being a scroll that can basically 
basically charge all of your glories in one go. So there is numerous reasons as to why this isn't the best money maker as it used to be. But needless to say, I still made close to 2 mil an hour because of my luck. So if you do happen to get lucky and you do hit that eternal drop table, 1 in 25k, you will be making some crazy money per hour. Speaking of getting lucky though, happy Valentine's Day to all of you. Thank you so much for spending your day or your night, whatever day it may be with me in this video. I do appreciate you guys so much. I will see you soon with another video as always. And until then, Mr. No Sleep, out.